what might happen in my state of New York, and it's really, really depressing. Um, I've had some contact with Williams, and so far it's been duplicitous. Uh, everything they've told us, we found out later, were half-truths. Uh, the pipeline was completely full. It, there's, lots, there's lots of examples, but I've lost all confidence that you're going to tell the full truth to people whose lives you're going to have an enormous impact on. You're you think you're headed for New York, you're going to run over all kinds of private properties and spoil them, and uh, you're going to make people sick. And this is temporal <coughs> right here, but you will be held responsible for making people sick. You think this, that you're going to get away with it if you can meet this regulation or that regulation, or if you're going to keep one type of poison to the, to the level now acceptable, now they think won't make you sick. But if you add all those poisons together and you study this over time and you take all of the examples of people who are already getting sick, it's going to be your fault. It's going to be your fault. It's not just you're doing your job. You're a person and I'm a person. And if I get sick and my kids get sick and my home gets wrecked, it's your fault, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Albert Crudo. OK, so you're the Department of Environmental Protection, correct? So let's kind of analyze what the Department of Environmental Protection means. A department, a group of people formed to accomplish a certain task or for a certain reason. Environment, a place or area where a species depends on for, for survival. Protection, the act of saving something or someone or someplace from danger or harm. So, okay, now that we're all clear that you're the Department of Environmental Protection, uh, well, you're failing at your jobs and miserably then. You are condemning the people of this area to unnecessary health risks, exposing them to toxic and poisonous situations. And you may think you're getting away with this, with perpetuating these environmental atrocities. But let me tell you, the world's changing, and it's changing quickly, and you will be held responsible. And for abetting the gas and oil industries in their crimes against nature, you will be held accountable. This is my first time in this part of PA, and on my short drive here from New York, the, the devastation I witnessed was appalling. If you think you're going to do this in New York, you're sadly mistaken. You should be ashamed of yourselves, especially you as a woman. How do you even look at your children in the eyes knowing what you are, that you are an accomplice in destroying their future? Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. And you're young enough to know better. Thank you, sir. Vera uh, I want to say that uh, all the compressor stations, including this one, is going to emit tons of all kinds of pollutants. And I came here from Long Island, New York, 21 years ago with my three children and uh, five cats. And I came here for clean air, clean water. So I would like to keep it that way. And right now, after four years of industrial development, that is no longer the case. I give tours every week, a citizen's tour of the sites. And I show people from all over the world, and especially from New York, what is happening to us. How, when there's no zoning, you can do anything anywhere. You can put small, I call them small refineries. A small refinery on a, as a gas site up to like 300 feet or more from a home and from livestock. And you can also put compressor stations. We have a new one right now near me in Liberty Township, 400 feet from homes. And that you can do this anywhere. You can industrialize a whole county. And that's what's happening to us, and not only our county, but 24 or 25 other counties in Pennsylvania. So that the state where agriculture and food and milk and um, meat and everything is produced, 
and that is going into the food chain. I know farmers who have bad water because of gas drilling and fracking near them, and their animals have sores, their water has turned gray, they have rashes on their own bodies, and this milk is going into the food chain. It hasn't been stopped yet. I've been calling the DEP, I mean, I do call them pretty often, maybe once a week, and try and let them know what's happening. So this, these families, they need to have their water tested. I just got a call today from a family in Springville, and their water has changed, and they're getting diarrhea, they have stomach problems, and they have cows, they're also a dairy, 200 head of cows. They are concerned about the changes. They have two wells uh, about a quarter of a mile from them. So I told them, call the DEP, I gave them the number, call them as soon as possible, tell them the changes. Anyone that has changes to their water, to your health after drilling and fracking, call the DEP and get a test, the water tested, because even the pre-drill test is not sufficient, because things change. And this is post-fracking, post-drilling, get another test. So now we have all these air emissions. Tons are allowed of all the VOCs, B-Texes, and the formaldehydes and everything else. And we will be breathing this. I go in front of compressor stations. It takes me within 15 minutes to start to feel irritation in my throat, in my nasal passages. And I start to react, my forehead, and other people feel it too. So it depends on your sensitivity, of course. Everybody's different. It varies with each individual. So this is what we're being exposed to. My children, my grandchildren, all of us, even though we have a small population, 45,000 in our county, it is still exposure for everyone. And I am asking and pleading with the DEP, please do not allow this compressor station, do not allow the permitting of it. It is just another one out of at least 17 that are now being proposed and more, a couple of dozen. They want to have a compressor station every two to four miles, we have four proposed on a 21-mile gathering line in the northern part of our county. Please don't allow this one. This one's a large one, and then there will be large uh, pipelines going from it, and it will impact our area further and further. But this is one of many impacts, and it's just endless for four years, and there's been no abatement. Got about a minute here. Thank you. And uh, I'm just pleading with the Williams people, relinquish your positions. Don't even work for this company. They, as many other companies, have loads of violations. They have all kinds of problems. There's leaks in pipelines. Show that you don't want this for your humanity. You don't want this for your neighbors. And this is not being a good neighbor by allowing this abomination in our county. Because that's what it is. And we will hope that at some point you'll run out of money and you won't be able to do this kind of genocide and abomination to us, as well as all the other states in this country and around the world. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher Ecker? Christopher? I don't know if he left. Are you still here, Christopher? Okay. Uh, David Plank. Did you stay, David? Okay, maybe you didn't stay. Uh, Dr. Reverend Ellen Sokolow. After the, um, after the uh, response or lack of response to my earlier questions, I think I'm going to have to rewrite this as I'm speaking. After the response or lack of response to my earlier question, I think I'm going to have to rewrite this as I'm speaking. Um, I was going to talk about how I've traveled through this area for more than 25 years to go to work and what it meant to me, but obviously that's meaningless to you six and everybody who you represent. I'm concerned about this proposed compressor station because I'm wondering if it's your intention that this will connect with the proposed Constitution pipeline. And I've unders underscored that word proposed several times because I'm here to let you know as a representative of New York State citizens that we will not allow you to do this in our state. We are going to stop you in the courts, at the border, in every way possible. And I want you to listen to that, because that's the truth. Woo! 
Again, I, I understand this question was asked earlier. Why isn't Williams including this compressor station as part of their proposal for the Constitution pipeline? Don't give me that double talk about your different parts of the same company. It's all the same program. And I understand that your only motivation is profit. But I want you to understand, and I wanted you to take this back to your masters, that we will not allow you to continue. This is the behavior of the death throes of an industry. The oil and gas industry is finished on this planet. Do you understand that? If you want to make profit, you have to switch over to renewable energy. If you had any brains, you would have done it 20 years ago. You three are charged with protecting the environment and the public. And I don't want to hear this double talk about federal standards and state standards. Where are your ethics as a human being? Would you look me in the eye, please, when I'm talking to you? Where are your ethics? You can't. They are Sir, human. Please don't interrupt. They are human, and that's why you can't look me in the eye. I asked all of the other questions. I want to repeat, what are you doing to protect your own workers from lawsuits when they do file violations? And an added question, how many investigators do you have to investigate violations in your state? In New York, we have two. Do you think that's adequate? Do you have more than two? So, um, in my outline, I thought it would be helpful to tell you what I'd like to see you do, and I'm speaking to the DEP and the representatives here. I would like to see you completely and totally and forever deny permits for this kind of industry, whether it's a compressor station or hydrofracking or any other industry that's going to conflict with your mandate to protect us. You have about a, one minute. I want you to become a national showcase for renewable energy. Even though he's not looking at me, I've seen his eyes. And I can see that the three of you are an intelligent people and you know how to do this. You have the capability to do this. I want you to fulfill your mandate to protect this beautiful state of Pennsylvania. Her citizens, the livestock and future generations. 37. And everything else I wrote down, people asked. Thank you. Thank you. you know, Howard, Hannah? Howard? My name is Howard Hannum and I am a small farmer from Delaware County, New York. The downwind jet stream from northeast Penn, the, in the northeast part of the United States is basically an inverted L shape from Pittsburgh, PA to the Hudson Valley in New York. The affected area within that downwind jet stream is roughly 210 to 220 miles. If ground zero of northern Pennsylvania gas drilling is Tawanda, I am certainly in the downwind affected area, just 71 miles away. As a good neighbor policy, I have some concerns with this station going in. Title V federal permitting is conveniently avoided because the segmenting, segmenting the different pieces and permitting with GP5 one piece at a time, Cabot Williams Midstream and Williams HP Compression Station located on the same 54 acre site on Turnpike Road in Brooklyn Township should require an aggregate cumulative environmental impact assessment. Your regional office is located in Wilkes-Barre, PA, which is just outside the downwind jet stream of Bradford and Susquehanna counties. 
Are your measurement instrumentations located in Wilkes-Barre as well? It's one thing to claim the air quality is sufficient, but when it's measured from a source located outside the jet stream, that is quite something else. Finally, on the national ambient air quality standards, areas of high potency across northern Pennsylvania are set to be studied in the fall. Meanwhile, you are continuing to issue permits throughout the future study site. I would advise waiting on approval of permits until the results of the, are available, which would shed more light on that decision-making process. And then finally, please enter the EPA STAR program for this site. Thank you, sir. We have uh, William Houston. I wrote it down. I don't know if I can understand. Oh, okay. You can use anyone. I'm going to use that one because that's for my camera. In the computer, I like to be on TV. Okay, thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, if I were to ask, I'm thinking of like a James Bond movie. If I were to ask, like, I, I had a mad scientist. If I'm like a really evil man, and I'm a mad, I have a, a friend that's a mad scientist, and I, and I tell my friend, the mad scientist, that I want to destroy an entire nation of 10 million people. It's about the size of New York. And I said, mad scientist friend, how would you go about doing that? Because I don't know, I'm just an evil man. You're the brains. So the mad scientist guy pulls out his pen, he starts writing down some calculations. He's kind of like scratching his head and doing some stuff. He says, I think I got it. And what we're going to do is we're going to take 70,000 injection wells and we're going to shoot, we're going to do two things. We're going to take massive amounts of water and we're going to mix it with poison and shoot it into the water table or through the water table, through leaky conduits. That's potentially the worst case scenario of what we're talking about here. We already have homes in Pennsylvania, very close to here, that are being abandoned. Do you know that? Oh, I'm sorry, this isn't question and answer. You're not going to respond. So I'm sorry about asking you that question. 350 billion gallons. I know we're, they're in PA, it's a little different, but what's coming to New York is projected. I know the numbers for New York. 70,000 wells times 5 million gallons per well comes out to be 350 billion gallons consumptive use. That's what, and when we're talking about one little compressor station, we have to be looking at the big picture. If we don't look at the big picture, cumulative impacts, have you heard that before tonight? Cumulative, has everybody? I think a few people have talked about cumulative impacts here tonight. If you don't look at the big picture, it's called segmentation, and it's illegal, especially when the possible consequence of segmentation is the destruction of life. For how long? How long will this play? How long will Dimmick be poisoned? 500 years? Or will it be more like 10,000 years? Has that study been done? I assert, I've looked into this, I've studied this, the technical documents, and I, it is my belief that this station that you're talking about is the beginning. The only reason why you need that level of compression is because you want to pump it into a third big pipeline, like a 30-inch. I mean, we're not stupid. We've got physicists here. We can understand this stuff. The only reason... It's not like, well, we're thinking, we, you know, we might use the Constitution as an input if it comes online. You're expecting it to come online because there's no reason for this station without it. And if it's true that this is the beginning of the Constitution pipeline, then you ha you've begun. It's in progress. I've seen it. I've been to the site. You're building it. You're not waiting for the federal permit. You're building it now. Constitution's in pre-file. How dare you do this? The question is... The question is, do we have a democracy here? Do the people rule? Or does some business entity get to decide what's going on here? We have about a minute.